you see yourself in five years? Because I need to know where your mindset's at. Yeah. I'm tired of getting played with, man. Like most people are just like crabs in a barrel. Damn, is this an interview? So he ain't asking no questions. We're already doing this. There's no turning back now. Welcome back, everybody, with another episode of Direct Discussions. Today, we want to welcome our guest, Brandon Matlock, out of Dallas, Texas. Hey, what's going A star on, on the rise featured in roles such as Tony in The First Christmas and Trey in Mojo Savage and Mike in The Drop Spot. Let's go. Sir, yes, sir. Let's go, baby. How you feel today, bro? What's up, man? Uh, I feel good, man. Feel Thank y'all for having me, man. Yes, sir. Got to have you on. It's funny. Let's take it back to the beginning a little bit. I had met Brandon... I can't even think of the year. I think it was maybe 2017. And in 2017 is when I met him. He was doing uh, some of these competitions they were having at this place called The Joint over there off of Harry Hines. And we were just, that's how we met at the time. And he was just doing the competitions. They were doing $500 competitions at the time. And that's where we had met. So when did you first get and started going from, you know, going from the rap into acting? Uh, So, like you said, back then we was... Forming a lot, you know what I'm saying? Doing competitions uh, all through 2012 up until 2016, you know what I'm saying? I was going hard with the music. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ain't gonna say I fell off of it, but I kind of like took another turn, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, to the entertainment business. Yeah, they uh, took a pivot. Yeah, yeah, just a small little pivot. Um, I was already in, in into the entertainment, people, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Goofy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, school, you know, doing different plays and, and, and shit like that. So uh, I was like, why not take it serious and really dive into it? Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's what I did uh, 2020. 2020? Uh, yeah, 2020. Oh. Before that, uh, shout out to, you know, TikTok. They finna shut it down, I heard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. But uh, when when uh, the pandemic happened, that's yeah. when everybody just really went. Social media, social media. You know what I'm saying. So I took that time to start going crazy on the on the on the videos and the content, yeah. mm-hmm. and so that led me into some eyes of directors, and you know they started following me, started networking, you know got on set to be an extra one time, and, and it, it's been up since 2020, man. That's as crazy. far as the acting. That was crazy. And extra is where you first started, and then after that, just started going yeah, up and my, up. My first film, I was an extra on uh on, on the movie set called Heavy. Shout out to Tierra Stacks and uh, Marcus Bailey. Um, I was a heavy. I ain't had no lines. I ain't had nothing. But I swear I was like, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to be so extra that they going to make me have a line or make me bump into the like the lead lead <laughs> character. You know what I'm saying? And I, sh- I swear to God, I got, I got there and the director was like, hey, you, Brandon, yeah, come stand right here in front of the camera. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to be in front of everybody. You know, and then, and then he was like, hey, I want you to say one word. Get out of here, bro. I really just spoke this, you know what I'm saying? One word, you know, now that word didn't make it to the cut, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But uh, that was the motivation for me to, you know what I'm saying, really just keep going with it. Yeah, know? go full throttle. Yeah, man. It's all the process. Heck yeah. So did you know you always wanted to act or just because of the TikTok thing made you want to say, okay, I can probably get into acting now, now that people are coming my way? Because I did check out your Instagram and your YouTube and I noticed that you did some rapping before. I did. I, did. Uh, I always knew that I was going to be in entertainment. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know what it was going to be. Of course, my passion is music, but uh, I just knew I was going to be on that screen, on, in front of the camera doing something. Telling jokes, uh, acting, uh, in music, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was going to be football one time, but <laughs> entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't really, to myself, I didn't really say it was going to be acting until, like, 2021, you know what I'm saying? When I actually saw movies and like saw the growth and started taking it serious, doing classes and stuff like that. And I was like, I, I don't know. I might, yeah, I could do this. <laughs> and so, so I want to ask, well, go, ahead, but go ahead. I got one. So, what kind of classes are you taking? Yes, you're taking acting roles and acting classes, but are they more intermediate or were they like beginner level? Or they, uh, I started off with a uh, beginner level. Um, and then uh, I couldn't afford like real, real classes, you know, like mm. to get better. So I got on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. um, like anybody else, you can find anything on YouTube. Yeah. So I got on YouTube um, and then I looked up 
Uh, shout out to my boy Eric, man. I looked up. He he took a class with um with uh, uh Samuel Jackson, mm. and so he has all the footage from that class. It's like six hours of uh, of acting, coach coaching acting from Samuel Jackson. It's like a free tutorial. Yeah, free tutorial. You know what I'm saying? I had this all on the flash drive, so I, I go Ooh. and look at that. And I mean, he dropping gems, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like, bet, bro. So like some deep stuff that that. All actors really need to to look at if you're really trying to take it to the next level. So, I appreciate him for that. And so, so you, how long did you take those classes? Uh, the first, the uh, beginner cl- uh, beginner class that was uh, two months, two months because you know it was like hundred dollars a guy now. Uh, <laughs> week, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, uh, the the free classes I did those I still do those anytime yeah. I can't pay for it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, the Samuel that was free. But um, shout out to um, Calvin. It's a it's a guy. He's an acting coach. He he charges um hundred dollars a month. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's pretty good. Very good acting mm-hmm. coach. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. So um, when you were in high school, if you don't mind me asking, what high school did you go to? Man, I went to. Uh, <laughs> now I moved all over. I went to Cedar Hill. I went to Forney. I went to Lakeview. And I moved to Louisiana and went to a school out there, Desire Street. So then, when did you move back out here? Uh. So from Louisiana, I went. I, I played ball. I got a scholarship to go to Oklahoma, uh, Langston University. Went out there, played ball for two years. Was in the music. Got signed a deal in Chicago. Moved to Chicago for like almost two years. Me and my partner, and uh, that didn't work out. Moved back to Dallas. Uh, twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Yeah. So in your time in high school, did you take acting classes as well? Because you know some people are in theater and all that. Nope. Were you a comedian in high school? No, I was a class clown. Oh, okay. yeah! Everybody voted me for the class clown. That was I got my ass whooped every day by my pops. <laughs> you remember the folders you had? It, they had to sign it with yeah. a sad face and stuff. <laughs> I got a, a sad face every day just because I like to make people laugh. You know, um, but now nah, in high school I never took any classes or, or theater. I did um, like back in church. I did like some. Um, we had like. You know, Easter, you had a little program, a little mm-hmm. church play and stuff like that. I did that um, and played around. Like, right when YouTube first came out, I had a camera, and I would always reenact videos, remake them. But, nah, no classes. I never thought that I would be a real actor. Bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there any influences? <clears throat> well, two questions, two-part question. Was there any influences that got you into wanting to rap? And then was there any influences once you pivoted your career into acting that influenced you even more to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I got to take this to another level? Uh, good question. So <laughs> I won't get no flag for this. So um, the music, it was uh, Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy and R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Hey, R. Kelly fire, bro. I don't care what they say. His music, though, fire. I don't, I, I don't mess with Robert. But R. Kelly, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, that's me. You know, you turn on some R. Kelly, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to set the mood. But if you're talking about Robert. If you're talking about Robert, I'm, hey, leave me out of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but now, nah, um, so those, them two really started me to start my own music. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? i always been a music head. I got tapes from when I was two years old singing songs, like, that's cool. full blown. You know, so i always been around music. But uh, those two made me, like, let me start doing my own thing. And then from there... I started seeing artists be actors. You know what I'm saying? Your Ice Cubes. Um, uh, uh, cool J. LL Cool J. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I was like, well, if they can do it, you know, and they pretty good at it, mm-hmm. I can do it too. Yo. And so that's why uh, that, that helped me transition mm-hmm. into the, um, the pivot. To the act. I want to touch base on your love for music because, I, I mean, I feel like we're around the same age. Maybe you're a little older than I am or whatnot. But growing up in Oak Cliff, you know, single mother household, no internet. Yeah. We didn't have any phones. All we had was the radio. Yeah. The radio in the room. Had your <laughs> preset set to 97.9. Yeah. yeah. Me added on a 97.1, 1021, <laughs> you know, K104, yeah. 106.1, back when the radio was good to listen yeah. to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you have any experiences like that as well? Or were your music just oh, looking it up online? Uh, my music started with the with, with family. Like, I just, my first thought is like family reunions. Mm. They were just playing old school R and B, um, some jazz, uh, pops in the car ride with him. You know, what I'm saying? like our household was just music. It, it really wasn't uh, radio. It was Al Green. Like Sundays, my mama put on music. We had to clean up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, <laughs> um, so that's how I got hooked on 
onto the music, or that's what that was what was around me at that time. Uh, it was old school music. Yeah. So were they vinyls or were they you know big old album of just random three for ten vinyls. CDs? Vinyls. Oh, vinyls. Right yeah. Vinyl. That's why I keep looking at it. <laughs> Yeah. Flashbacks, yeah, vinyls, man, big ass crates. Oh, crates. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's yeah. got to be beautiful to reminisce on that kind of stuff yeah. because nowadays everyone's trying to recol- recon, uh, I guess, reconfigure that in their own households yeah. with all yeah. the newer equipment. But it's funny though because none of the newer equipment that they have, no matter how new it is, it's yeah. not going to sound like it does back then. Nah, yeah, with that man. original tape recorder and all that. Not, all the- I, I wish I had my first um, song that I made. That I wrote and I recorded is on a cassette tape. That's fire, bro. A tape. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta like, go buy the player. Man, to I, to I would pay to to find that tape, you know what I'm saying? Just so I could play it. I got I got tapes of football, you know, uh me playing football games and stuff on uh you know, I don't even know what you call them now. Are they VHSs? Yeah. VHSs, yeah. Yeah, but I don't need but you need a VCR, right? So, so that was, with, <laughs> yeah, to rewind it. To rewind right. it. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh yeah, I miss I miss that time. That's a, that's a good time when you were growing up. It was actually probably the best time because it was before the internet even took off. Facts. It was like every anybody you know was because you were playing outside or whatever. Facts, it was. Huh? That's the best time. How many kids are playing outside right now? None. Not that many. <laughs> they all on the games. Not yeah. that many. The funny thing about it though is that it felt a lot safer to do that because I remember growing up in apartments. It was four o'clock. You know, everybody go home, eat real quick. Four o'clock. Boom, boom, boom. Can you, this person come out? Can this person yeah. come out? Ask yep. everybody, can he, can he come out and play? Can he come out and play? He's got to clean his room first. Yeah. Yeah, All you're rushing time. to clean your room up. <laughs> every time. All right, now when I go, yeah, be home before the uh, street lights before turn the lights on. Come on. Yep. Every yep. time, street lights. That's what's so funny, bro. Classic times. Yeah, I'm scared to do that. Um, now. With now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would, uh-huh. I, me, and, and I got a boy. You know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. seven, but I, I don't see me saying, go outside, come back when the lights come on. Yeah. You just outside. Yeah, we used to be outside, bro. We never came back in unless we were Gone. thirsty. You know, coming to getting something. We was outside for hours, man. No, no, nothing. Nobody was call- couldn't call you. Couldn't call you. Had no phones like that. Yeah, he was gone. So he, and nobody knew what was going on at that time. Yeah. So transitions is next question. How did becoming a father really change your life? And I know a little bit about your scenario just because of what you post on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. But that's all That's all like from the past a little bit. So I'm assuming that changed. But how did uh, having your son change your life from like from when you were trying to like pivot and everything? Man, uh, it definitely made me a better person. Uh, mm-hmm. Made me a better man. Um, it keep me on my toes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, it's a lot of things. Because I noticed that um, he, he, he look up to me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And without, I don't know if he be knowing it or not, but he be doing some of the things that I be doing. Bro, I see it. You I know see, what I'm saying? When like, he got off the car, I was like, man, this boy look just like his dad right The now. other day, you know, I'm shaking my orange juice. You know, he in the back seat, he's shaking his juice too. I'm like, damn, okay. So I got to, they let me know I got to I gotta cut certain things out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I got to move a certain way. But um, it definitely also made me better because it made me want to go harder. Uh, motivation. You know what I'm saying? Um when my pops had me, he was older. I feel like I'm younger, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's in that age to where he can see what I'm doing. I bring him on set, you know what I'm saying? You see me over here now, you see what we're doing. Um, I let him know that what I'm doing is, is you can do that too. I want you to do more, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's, I love it, bro. It made me go harder. Man. So um, I know you're sharing a lot of love for your son, but in your mind, if you had a daughter, and the only reason I'm asking this is because I have a six-year-old and she's a girl. Okay. So, do you think your personality would? How would your personality would be different from having a son to having a daughter? Because they say, you know, whenever a man has a daughter, they become a lot softer. Yeah. And we we're talking about this with the other uh, co-host that we have, Jose, where it's like he's just tough, hard because two boys, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, and he's scared to have a. You know, he said he's you know, scared to have a girl because yeah. he doesn't want to get soft. Um. I will. I I don't even know. I can say this. I would unalive you for him for the boy. Mm-hmm. I would probably unalive you twice for for the girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I um I'm already knowing because how how, how I am with him. So I know a girl. That's my yeah. baby. Mm-hmm. Man, it, it'd be hard, man. And so you would it would soften you up. It would make you be like man, even more protective. I would be protective. You know what I'm saying? I uh, soft on her. Or you talking about like on out 
You become, you become just a little <laughs> bit softer because you have a girl and you know you have to be softer. So yeah. would you become that like softer like that? You yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Nah, I mean, mm-hmm. it's hard. It's, it's hard, hard, man. Because yeah, yeah I, I don't want to be too soft. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But that's baby. You know, that's yeah, baby that's, girl, the, that's the baby so, girl. <laughs> and I know they hard to raise, man. Especially at that certain age with boyfriends and the. Changes with the body and all that stuff, man. So, whew. you know, t- thinking about that, you know, in my perspective, I think, and this is just coming from me. Me, I like having a girl, mm-hmm. you know, unconditional love right away. Yes, you get that with a son, but it's a little different when you get it with your daughter because she just wants to be laid up with you. Yeah, yeah. I see the videos, and I got homies that that they have daughters that are. Daddy girls, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and and I love that, you know what I'm saying. Now it, it's kind of different because I get that from him, so, but it's a different reason. You yeah. you, you know the situation mm-hmm. or you know before, so um, I just know a daughter, man. It probably will soften yeah. all the way up. I probably be a little, <laughs> t- <laughs> a little teddy bear or something, man. But uh, I think my next one probably will be. That's what I was about to ask. So, do you want any more kids, or do you? Yeah. How many more kids do you want? As many as I can afford. Oh, okay. so I always said like if um or when my career blossoms, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have as many as I can afford. Wayne's family, you know so what I'm saying? Nick Cannon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I would rather have one family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If it happens like that, I, I think he has like six or seven baby mamas no, or something like that. eight. Yeah, eight baby mamas. Yeah, that's 11 too much. different kids. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah. I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to do all that. If I could, I would have one, you know what I'm saying, chick, maybe two. <clears throat> but That's, that's real old, uh, traditional if facts. you think about it. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I'm like traditional in a lot of ways. Now, there's some ways where I'm, I'm kind of... Um, a little bit more modern. Yeah, a new wave, you know, but a lot of my ways are, are old fashioned. Yeah, you seem like an old soul, bro. I, I, I think, think it's because you're before. upbringing. I think it's your upbringing. <laughs> like you said, just the, the music, the, the your environment, it's just you just come off like an old soul, real old school, which is really good, bro. Like, yeah. it's hard to find men like that that are not just trying to, you know, be out here touching anything that walks. Facts. So this you having this old this old school mindset is like really good for anything you're trying to do, especially right now because I know everything you be posting on Facebook be like <laughs> I'm I'm ready when the time yeah. comes I'm ready and I feel the same way with you, bro. But yeah. it's like we know we can't rush that process of having a woman come into our lives, especially with us having a little one. A little. It, it's it's a completely like you can't rush it. And I see a lot of other men that are just like they get with a girl. Then they get with the next girl. Then they get with the next girl. I'm like, bro, you got a kid. You can't just be bouncing from woman to woman to woman. Because they, like they, they watching it. You know what I'm saying? They watching it mm-hmm. and they taking notes, man. Um, I always, before he could even talk, kids are just looking. They're just, mm-hmm. they're looking and they were watching what you do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I don't have no women around. Um, Same here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, he might see a homegirl on the phone from FaceTime, you know what I'm saying? But just coming and chilling around, like, because you ain't going to be here. No, and I'm looking for something long term. Yep. And he is definitely always in my mind when I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the future. I'm looking, can you, can you, do you look like wifey? You know what I'm saying? Do I think we can make good kids together? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, um, what, what, your, what, your, what does your family side look like or how do they act? You know, let me see your mama. You know what I'm saying? I need no, to see yeah. certain things before, uh, and people don't do that no more. They don't court, they don't date. You know what I'm saying? It's just, no. I like you, you like me, let's do it. And then they break up and then wonder why. It's like, because you don't know this person. Bro. You ain't date her. You ain't asking no questions. I still send 21 questions. That, bro, that's I a, still send that uh, shit. That's a good one. That's, that's <laughs> like, good. And there's no sexual questions. Like, I be asking, like, real questions. Where you see yourself in five, ten years? You know what I'm saying? Like... I promise you, man. I'm I, glad you said it, bro. I'll be asking women the same thing. Where do you see yourself in five years? Because I need to know where your mindset's at. Because yeah. if our mindsets aren't the same, we're not even lined up right now to even start dating. Yeah. So to segue into that, when was your last date you went on? Mm. Like a legit date, you asked her out, hey, let me take you out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, man, because they, they don't even want to date. They just want to come over. Yeah, it seems like that, right? <laughs> nah, I, okay. So I I had a date, um, and I was I was kind of mad about this one too. I spent I spent two hundred dollars. Now it ain't about the money. Yeah, it ain't about the money. It was just the fact that after I spent the bread, I didn't feel the energy. I ain't feel the um 
the chemistry. The chemistry, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm I'm hitting you up, and if you just wanted a meal, you know what I'm saying? I could have cashed at you a meal. It's like <laughs> you wasting my time, though, and I don't like wasting yeah. time and energy. So uh, that was my last day. That was um, I think in October of last year. Mm. And uh, it was it was cool too. Like we did something different, something that I ain't never did before. It was a paint and sip. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was intimate. You know, it had the music and the lights, and and uh, you could uh, be wild, be smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like it was cool. Took her out to eat after that. Ate, got food, picked her up. You know what I'm saying? I took her back home. <sighs> Oh, maybe it was me. Man. That sounds like a good thing. That sounds like a good yeah. Thing, it was bro. cool, man. I like trying new things, though, man. But I do want to get back off into that dating world. But it's so it's it's tainted out here. It's hard. It's bad. It's so, so do you think it's harder for you to get uh, somebody that you want to date because of that? And like you said, the dating world is pretty tainted, which I can agree with. I mean, you see it all over social media. You know, women just posting their bodies for looks and whatnot. But as an actor, do people look at that first before they look at you and be like, oh, he's an actor. Yeah. Let me go ahead and start talking to him. Or do they get to know you for who you are? They definitely ain't getting to know me for who I am. <laughs> they, nah, they ain't doing that. Um, speaking of the 21 question, I'm going to ask you a question. Speaking of the 21 question, I just asked a female the other day, two days ago, about 21 questions. I, I sent her 11. Mm-hmm. I'll be breaking them up. I sent her 11. She was like, damn, is this an interview? It's like, yeah, yeah, it, it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but just her response, I ain't. It was like, damn, all right, you done let me know what I need to know I yeah. already. Um, my bad. Let me get back to your question. Um, could you? Oh, oh yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> no. So whenever you're in the dating scene, and you know, like back, when, like I was saying about, oh, how it's hard because of just how most women are nowadays. Yeah. Do they look at you as an actor before they look at yourself as a person? Yeah. Nah, they're looking at. Um, Social media, they're looking at numbers, they're looking at viral. Oh, you're in movies, you're on TikTok going crazy, you're on Insta, you know what I'm saying? They look at that and they want to be tied to that. People don't, they, they'll say it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be wanting to get to know you and all that, but they don't. They don't. They don't. You know what I'm saying? So, so hopefully it'll change. So, how do, you, how do you differentiate between women who are in that category and to women who actually want to get to know you, or is it too much of one sided? When it comes to women talking to you, uh, I, I, I ask questions bro. like um, if it seems too random, you know, like if I make a post right now and I'm like uh, DC on fly just hit my inbox. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And then a female hit me up like, how you big head? How you where you been? <laughs> you are within that dope. same day. It can it can be wow. the next day. You know what I'm saying? Like I get a lot of those. Yeah. And they, they just let me know right there. I don't block you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I leave I leave people on read now or read. Mm-hmm. Like I open it so so you can see that I saw this. I'm gonna do to you what you do to me. Exactly. They used yeah. to do me like that all the time. All the t- bro, they still do that now, bro. <laughs> all the I'm time. Like, bro. Just at least get a I'm not interested. Yeah. And I'll just leave you alone. So I'll you know what they try. do? You know what they do for David? <laughs> because he okay, so he told me this, uh he was like, If you want to get in touch with me, you gotta send me a video. And I'm like, a video? <laughs> He's like, Yeah, I send girls videos all the time whenever, you know, I wanna get uh trying to holler at him. There you yeah. go. He's like, hey, what's up? It's me, David. You know, I just want to let you know that I'm interested in you. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, to me, it's a little bit better, bro, because you're being clever instead of just walking up to them. Because, you know, yeah. if you're instead of shooting a regular DM in a text and you actually send her a video. Now it's like I can see what you look like mm-hmm. and I can even see how you're talking and how you're acting. If I even want to take go on a date, because yeah. just by pictures of looking at somebody's profile, you can't see what they sound like, what they talk like, True. how they are, their mannerisms. True. Just by me sending you a video and how I'm talking to you. And trying to approach you you can say hey maybe he's doing something a lot of other guys don't do i'm nice. willing to actually take him on the day you know say it's yes definitely different because they they ain't out here doing it yeah actually i've only done that to two girls and it did work but, <laughs> but it was not after that it still didn't transition into actually being my girlfriend or nothing like that it was just like a date you know how many times i've gone so many dates where it's just one time you go on a date and it just never transpires yeah. past that so does i know you said that was in october but before october were you doing that same thing where you would go on just dates and they just would never transpire past that yeah or things got a little bit serious and then it broke down nah i used to do this thing where i just like do random dates you know what i'm saying like if you was in the inbox what you doing for lunch or if i was on lunch for an hour you know i just hit them up let's go on a lunch date mm. and just, just so i can convert it sometimes i ain't even like want to be with you i just wanted a, a the company the, the company. company you know what i'm saying the company you know what i'm saying uh, i just i, I enjoy women company 
I told somebody else the same thing, man. I was like, I'd rather hang out with a woman and be in her energy than to be hanging around with guys all the time, right. just hearing all this jibber jabber. Da, da, da. I'd rather just, you know, it's it's just way better just to get away from all that all the time. Because anytime we want that, we can go hit our homeboys up and we're around it all the yeah. time. How many times can we just go be with a female and just hang out, have a good conversation, and let it be? It? You know yeah. what I'm saying? We want the same thing, bro. We're all in the same. <laughs> we, we we don't like being alone, but yeah. we're alone, bro. We're gonna just right. take it as it comes. We're not trying to rush that. There's no point in rushing it. Man, when you, when you look in, when it comes down to finding the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, there is no way that you can rush that. Like, you can't be too fast. Nope. I got to wake up with this person, have kids with this person, you know, sick, health, all, you know, all the good and bad with this person, man. They be, you know, people breath be funky, you know. <laughs> they got eye boogers and stuff in the morning. You, yep. you got to just... You got to be okay with that, essentially. You have to, you know what I'm saying. And and when you when you find in this person, man, I just I feel like you don't have to rush that. You know what I'm saying. You need me. I have to check off all the seasons first, not winter, fall, summer. I'm talking. About, I got to see you when you broke. Mm-hmm. I got to see you when you up. I got to see you when you lose somebody. I got to see you. I just got to see how you are because people characters change depending on what season you meet them in. Mm-hmm. You meet them when they up. You like, damn, man, this girl dope. Like she's good, and then she ain't got no money. She's a thief. Like she steal from you, you know. She she an asshole. I mean, you know, she just all these things, and it's like, damn, I ain't see that. You ain't see it in, in that season. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just it take me time to, you know, see uh, see a person all the way through before I get to. It. So I wanted to segue in, into acting. So is the majority of the acting that you do in Dallas? Because I mean, I've seen a couple of the movies already, and I, you know what makes me proud? And I was talking to another guest we had on that every time, like I was watching your movies. I always see it, the Dallas skyline. Yeah. And I'm like, or, you know, I see a familiar building. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, my city. Yeah, got to represent, man. Um, majority of my movies have all been in Dallas. I've done uh, one film uh, in South Carolina. Ooh. Um, it's not out yet, but... Um, Which one is that one? Uh, it's not out yet. No, um, it's not, not, not a name, nothing like that? No, it's called uh, Secret Society. Oh, okay. I did. I, I, I saw that. See, I saw they, that they poster. Have, they have a few of them, but it's uh, Secret Society of the Brokenhearted or something like that. But yeah. Shout out to them. Um, so that's the one I did out, out of state. Um, everything else has pretty much been uh, in Dallas. I did one film in Houston. Um, that'll be dropping uh, in April, I believe. It's called Kingsman. Kingsman, ooh. Yeah. yeah Damn, that, so I didn't even know you were go. working on those other two videos, but you keep yeah, going man. a little bit. Man, I, I try to, um, I just work, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I just work, man. Uh, I keep my head down. I try to, I don't, I don't really, like. I said it in 2020, and I, I made a vow, and I ain't went back to it. Once I say something, like that's it. I, I didn't say it already. I know. I know y'all probably know a lot of people that be like, "Man, let's get a podcast together." And then for like the next six months, you like, "Man, let's get a podcast." Like you just always bringing up the idea to bring up to do a podcast. We never do it. Though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of doing that shit. So mm-hmm. once I say it, I write it down, bro. And I, and I, the, the next time you see me, I'm doing that shit. Yeah. And so that's that's what I do with um with films. Bro. You know what that goes back to? Even then you said that it's the old school mindset of your man is, your word is your bond. Yeah. Like your word is your your commitment to whatever it is. So if I say I'm gonna do it, then now it's my obligation to say, Hey, I gotta do it. Yeah. And so I think that goes back to old school mentality because a lot of people are their their word, they don't even care no more. Facts. Like, I'm gonna do this and then, you know, <laughs> however long goes by and they ain't there's no nothing. there's no uh you don't get penalized for it no more. You don't yeah. get, you don't mm-hmm. get looked down upon for not keeping your word. It's just like, oh, oh well. Yeah, you don't lose character points nowadays. Not at all. It's okay. ironic that you bring that up because when we were getting the whole idea of getting a podcast together. I've had the idea embedded in me since last year. I was little by little just setting everything up, hanging posters, frames, working on lighting. All like if you look at the lighting on the walls, the strips. Mm-hmm. So I had to basically screw everything into there with the little thing that holds the screw in, connect the strips and all that to get it all angled. So it took me yeah. a while, as, um, but you know, essentially speaking, is I'm like okay. Everything's set. Now what? And then, you know, I just couldn't find, you know, I, I just couldn't get it going, man. I don't know what it was, but or a couple months ago, you know, I was trying to reach out to David a few months, like before then. But he finally, you know, I didn't send him a video, of course, but, <laughs> you know, he finally inboxed me because he saw me giving him a, uh, giving away a free Red Bull thing. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, come over. Come pick it up. Yeah. So I brought him into the room and it didn't look like this. And I'm like, look, I got an idea for a podcast. I want I want you to be a part of it because, you know. 
you are a really good talker and you like to be on camera. Yeah. And, you know, I like to do a bunch of behind the scenes stuff too, like all the editing video, all the tech, all the tech stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm really good at that. And then he was like, you know what? Me and my homeboy, Jose, were talking about doing a podcast for the longest. Every time we link up, do a podcast, do a podcast. And I'm like, you know what? Bring them on. <laughs> you know, bring them over. We'll sit down, talk, figure it out. But ever since then, you know, we all, you know, it was maybe two months ago where we were actually getting our heads down, and, you yeah. know, finding this out. But in, like, that's the thing, though, like for me and I'm like, we're already doing this. There's no turning back now. Yeah. No, there was no. T- as soon as we posted, yo, we're about to do a podcast. There's no turning back now because yeah. now it's like you hype it up and you're telling everybody, yo, it's I got there. it. And then you don't do it. It's like, I thought you said you were going to do this. Yeah. But regardless, even if people aren't really listening, because you said it yourself in the in your podcast yesterday, most people are just like crabs in a barrel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And which is they going to try to tear you down, man. Which is funny because on our end, we haven't really received much support for the stuff that we're doing from the people in our communities. And I'm like, which is OK, because at the end of the day, I'm gaining the knowledge on how to actually produce a nice looking podcast. Yeah. You know, David's getting more comfortable on camera. You know, Jose's, you know, actually having those in-depth conversations with David on open discussions. Mm -hmm. So everybody's getting a little something out of it. And, you know, that's where we take our joy. Bro, this is growing. Uh, I thought just from the looks of it, when I looked at the video, you know, on on Facebook, I was like, man, they've been doing this for some years. That's that's what we wanted. It it looked good, man. I come in here, it, it, it looks professional. You know what I'm saying? Got the setup, everything. I'm loving it. <laughs> That's all you thanks know? to Roger, too, on that one. Real quick to segue back into my question you skipped over. Oh, my bad. <laughs> what is, uh, what's your biggest influence in the acting whenever it came comes to acting? Who has been your biggest influence? Like, that you see his stuff or watch his stuff a lot of the time, refer back to it, watch a movie of his, and just get more inspired? Man, it's a, it's a few people. It's, we yeah. got time. Okay, yeah, it's a few people. Man, of course, man... Uh, not to be cliche, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, yeah, Denzel Washington's, your Will Smiths, uh, Michael B. Jordan, Samuel yeah. Jackson, mm-hmm. um, but for different reasons, man. Like if you if you look at these people that I just named, every time you like you know that's Will Smith, you know yep. what I'm saying. But when you see him in a movie, he is not Will Smith. Like he's Muhammad Ali. Denzel Washington, like he has the same voice, you know, I guarantee he has that same voice. But every movie that he plays in, he is that character. Like you don't see Denzel Washington, you see that character. Um, And I, I love that. Like when when you can take something on paper, man, just create a whole new character. person, a whole new character with it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know me as Brandon B. Naked or whatever. But if you watch a movie and you see... Alonzo, you know what I'm saying, and you enjoy that character. You're not watching Brandon no more. You watching Alonzo. I didn't did my job. Yeah, you, you know? did your job for sure because I really thought you was Mike when you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I appreciate. I, I was it. getting ready for you to bring the backpack behind your back and everything, and tell me how you gonna help us get this off. <laughs> Man, I appreciate it. Man, um, that was actually my first uh, major film. That was my first. Uh, lead movie I did, so I was an extra first my second movie I did one line and that was my third movie Drop Spot so um, it was very big for me at that time I was scared as yeah. as hell you know but I loved it man and from there I just been trying to grow how can I get better each movie you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying so I, I, I'm, I'm watching it like tape like film you know what I'm saying on game day or uh, after game day you know I'm watching oh, I could have did better on this or I could have know, said that line a little slower or had more delivery on this or whatever. So I'm always critiquing. Yeah, it's just getting better and at your craft that you're trying to get better yeah. at. And, and it's because of those guys, you know what I'm saying? Like every time I see them, have y'all seen them? Um, uh, I don't even, I ain't see the movie. I just seen the uh, scene. It's what Denzel watched. I think it's called Fences. Uh, he was talking to his son in the backyard. It was just. It's like a five minute scene. That monologue right there is just crazy. Now I'm gonna have to check it out. It's sure. crazy, man. I'm like, still got some some range, man. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. I want to. I don't want to just be funny. Mm-hmm. I want to be serious. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to be able to. My next movie, uh, Smoking Ashes. Shout out to uh, Cake and Alexander Black. Um, I'm a villain. That's dope. I'm a villain that's in cool. there. You know what I'm saying? I'm the bad guy, and everybody gonna hate me. And <laughs> It's gonna watch the TikTok right off me. Like everybody's not, gonna, they ain't gonna think I'm funny no more after this. But I like that though. Yeah, see, because I was gonna ask you. So, would you consider yourself 
a comedian or you're going to consider yourself an actor or you're going to say you're an entertainer? Entertainer. Okay. Yeah, I used to fight myself back and forth. Yeah, I'm an artist, actor, comedian, and, and it's like, you know, people have different things to say. I'm an entertainer. Mm-hmm. You know, what you boot me for, I get it to you. you know, it's <laughs> music, you need some jokes, you need a host, mm-hmm. uh, you need some acting, I got you. Yeah, almost like a jack of all trades when it comes to entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of like that, I would say. That's what sounds good to me. <laughs> so, um, I want to ask you this, because I think I asked you this on your um, on, on your podcast yesterday. But I want to get to know more about the Dallas uh, film industry. Because, you know, <laughs> I'm seeing these movies on Tubi, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I get to see, I get to see the skyline from mural places and whatnot. So, I didn't really know that there was an actual, like, a film industry in Dallas. And yeah. so, I, you know... David put me on to you and I started watching some of your stuff and I'm like, wow, this is actually happening. Yeah. 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 Um, I was surprised too. I ain't gonna lie. 2020. Um, so so Tubi is is still a new thing. You know, mm-hmm. Tubi Peacock for for me, it's all been new. And then finding out that people around me can have the access to put movies on that site is crazy. Crazy. Because I'm a movie head, you know what I'm saying? Like you watch movies at the movie. On Netflix, you know what I'm saying? Like you had to download it and stuff. Like we're not on no movies, Mm-mm. but for me, you know, now I'm seeing people filming movies, so I was lit about that. Um, and ever since then, it has been growing. Quality, sound, actors, like the acting is good, the storytelling is good. Um, the budgeting, the budgeting is getting better. You know what I'm saying? Because the streams are getting better too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so that back end is is, is looking well and. You know, it's, it's a lot of eyes that are that are starting to look at Dallas in the film industry that wasn't doing that before. That everybody looked at Dallas for you know a dance or a music city. You know what I'm saying? But now they're starting to open their eyes to the to the film world. Yeah, I can't wait for the day that where maybe five, ten years, God willing, of course, that there's an actual set, a place yeah. to re- do videos and whatnot. Facts. And I hope it's Dallas based. I hope it isn't isn't some of California coming over. And just, you know, saying, all right, we're going to open up another Universal Studios right here. Right. And don't let none of the Dallas people. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Because because that's the thing, though. Like, you hear, I mean, first thing that comes to mind when you think of L.A., oh, Hollywood, yeah. mm-hmm. Atlanta, Tyler Perry, you know, his studio, yeah. you know, you just New York, you know, Times Square. You know, what do we have? You know, yeah. what does Dallas have? Um, 50 Cent just built a studio out there in Louisiana now. There you go. You know, so, Louisiana. I mean that's that's around the corner, but you know I think I think it's coming. Um, matter of fact, I, I've heard some talks about it coming in Mansfield. Uh, they, I think up, you're right. I think I studio. think about something like um, that. The, matter of fact, the guy um, uh, from uh, I was um, Black Hawk from Marvel. Uh, I forgot his with name. the goggles. Uh, I don't know his name. Um, you know what's funny? I know who you're talking about. Him. But for some reason, when you're bringing him up, all I can think about is the guy. I don't know if you watched. Um, uh, uh, brain fart. Uh, what's that? What's, what's that show? <laughs> what's that show that's on Amazon with a superhero that's bad? Oh, uh, the boys. The boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Of, that's I'm, my. Shit. I, I'm thinking about the the, yeah. dude, the the dude that plays the one that you know is taking them steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. That's a good show, by the way. Um, but, yeah, I think he's uh, setting up something in Mansfield. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if it's real, but it has been talks about that happening. No, man, I can appreciate that, man. You know, like, I mean, I wish it was somebody within the community. Right, right. From Dallas. But for someone that, like, you know, and I was saying, oh, you know, somebody coming over and, you know, doing it over here, you know. But all that opportunity that's going to create for actors like yourself. Yeah. You know, major. That's what I was going to say. If they could do that, somebody from Dallas or Texas build a studio where they can just start getting all these local artists, yeah. all these other local actors to come in and say, hey, come on over here. Because there was somebody I know from that I went to high school with. They were a great older. He went to L.A. to go become an actor. Why couldn't he have just stayed in Dallas yeah. to become an actor? I wish it would be like that. But the opportunity is not there yet. Yeah. Hopefully with time, that opportunity arises because that's what we want. We want to put people on from Dallas. I hate the idea of we come from the same area so we can't help each other. I hate that Man. narrative that people create in Dallas. That's why there's so many like raft beefs and all this other stuff going on is because people want to go against each other. So saying, hey, let's bring everybody up together so we can all get to a higher level, yeah. put Dallas itself 
on the map on instead the map. of just you as an individual. Facts. Facts. Uh, TikTok taught me that. <laughs> like, our people be laughing when I be referring to TikTok, but I swear, man, like, TikTok opened my mind to a lot of things. Like, I got half a million followers over there, right? Mm-hmm. But it's still people in Dallas who don't know who I am. Um, I didn't did. I got one video. I did like thirty two mil. That's a lot, bro. And, and 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 yet there's still people in Dallas right next door. Don't even know who I am. You know what I'm saying? But that's crazy to say thirty two million when and you, you got don't even know who I am. And you don't crazy. even know who I am. You got famous people using my videos, all this stuff. But I say that to say like the world is so big, man. Dallas is so big that we can we can afford to help each other. All three of us come up. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because. You can do 32. You could do 32. I could do 32. And guess what? It's still going to be somebody out there who don't know who the fuck we are. I've been te- I was telling, I was telling Jose <laughs> that. I was like, man, I know. I was, he, we were talking about who's watching our videos and stuff. I was like, man, there's like a at least 10 or 15 people I know for sure have not even watched our videos yet. Yeah. Who they said they were going to watch it. Yeah. And it's the same idea. Oh, we're going to support. We're going to support. And then they don't end up supporting. There's so many people that are, like, are, are on your side, our mm-hmm. side, that are like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. You do it. And then... Whereas I thought you were going to support. Yeah, I've I've learned with this business, with with the entertainment thing, period, man. And it might just be in general, but people don't jump on until it's moving. We were talking <laughs> until about it that starts, the other day. Until it starts blowing up and people talking about it, you know, let you go get, you know, Dak Prescott on the show right now. And then it takes off. It's going to blow up. They're going to be tuning in. Hey, Fox when, 4 News. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sad, but... So sad, man. And people don't realize that if if our people got behind it right now, mm-hmm. it'll blow up, and then we could really start, you know, what I'm saying, really bringing in guests and, and and putting people on, you know. But they, our city, and I know they do. They people have their own problems in each city, but for Dallas, I feel like um, it's crabs in a bucket, and yep. people wait until the train is already moving, and by the time it's already moving, we really don't. Well, don't I, you know, I, I appreciate your mm-hmm. help, you know what I'm saying, but I don't need it no more because. Yeah. The train is moving. We gonna we gonna get people regardless, man. All them people on TikTok that 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 and Instagram and Facebook now that mess with me, that follow me, they don't know me. They're not even from Dallas. Nope. But they follow. Crazy. They stream the movies. They you know, download whatever they need to do, man. And I, I love it, bro. That's what. That's why I, I, I hate the narrative, but it's so true. The people that don't know you support you more than the people that know you. Way more. And don't even make no. I sense. think it's a jealousy thing. It's like, man, I. I went to school with him, man. He, he wasn't back. He wasn't like that back then. Now look at him, you know. And it's it's like instead of just giving a like or or a heart or sharing, you know, because you ain't got to do all, yeah. all of this is free. Yeah, <laughs> all of this is free, but you can hit the share button and and just and get the get your followers in tune with this guy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then vice versa. It's, it's crazy, just so bro. crazy to think about it. You know, you're holding your phone, right? All you have to do is. Scroll, scroll, <laughs> boom, double tap, boom. double tap, and it's done. <laughs> you don't have to dream about it, bro. You, you ain't got to go tell dollar. your wife about it. You ain't got to nothing. You you're just liking it. That's it. Sharing it. Simple. Two seconds. <laughs> Three seconds. Oh no, seconds. but I don't want to be associated with this kind of stuff. Oh, like it's, oh, it's, it's crazy. Right, so, and we're gonna go up a little bit, and then we're gonna come down. And I'm just playing. Mm-hmm. All right, but what has been your proudest moment in acting so far? Um, it have to be the growth uh, that I continue to put in, and I say that because the last two films that I just did were two characters that I haven't played before. Mm. Um, I'm always funny. Now I was a, a little comedic in one of those roles, but I was um, I was a uh, hard ass. I was a bad ass. I was uh, more serious. Yeah, I was serious more serious. Girl. You know what I'm saying? Um. And the other role, I played a cop. I played a detective. And I had to propose, you know what I'm saying? And just just for that alone, the proposal, I've never said these type of things to a woman. So <laughs> yeah. it's crazy because you, you're supposed to, like, build this background. And, you know, you're building this character. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not me that's saying these words. It's this guy, Michael. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it was so hard for me to find that, that character because I, I've never said this the, mm-hmm. the girl that I, I like the most, I've never said any of these words to her. And these are some some words, some deep corn, words. some deep words, you know what I'm saying? But when I did it, I mean, I'm locking eyes with her. And I, and I didn't, usually 
I don't know how other people do it, but uh, for this scene, we would practice it. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to practice it. Um, we didn't. And I didn't want to because I wanted to get her real reaction. Oh, that's good. She cried, bro. Oh, that's real she good. She cried. She felt, that's how you know she, the moment was like, you did your part, but yeah. y'all felt it. Yeah. Like, when you can feel it and you feel like you're, you actually mean these words you're yeah. telling her. Yeah. Man. <laughs> that's I my proudest about, moment for, as far as that. acting. You know, um, I done been on sets with um, stars, you know what I'm saying? That was cool. But that's my proudest moment because that's growth. It was something different. And I think it's going to come out good. Man. I think the people. Love it. it was okay. kind of like unlocking a different milestone. It's like you're going up the ladder. You're like, great, I was able to make somebody feel. Yeah. Now, my next goal will probably be having people watch me and say, oh, that's this character he's playing. That's not Brandon. Right, mm-hmm. right. Um, Kevin Hart, did y'all see that that movie he did on Netflix? Um, I think it's called Story, uh, True Story is the name of it. If you haven't, check it out. So, Kevin Hart is a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. He, he's, he's funny. I seen him do a movie. Well, of course, he did uh, Soul Plane and all that, but, but that, those are funny movies. Yeah. He did a serious movie with his daughter, or not his actual daughter, but it was like, the, it was his daughter in the movie. Mm-hmm. He was a dad. It was a sad movie. I gave it 20 minutes, cut it off. It was garbage to me. <laughs> it was a lot of people that were saying it, it just wasn't believable. And I'm mm-hmm. now because I'm an actor, I look at that. You got to make me believe that role. And I couldn't believe it, so I turned it off. The next movie came out was True Story with him and uh, Wesley Snipes. Swear to God, that was probably his best role I've ever seen him in. Mm. He made me believe that role. Now, it it was a different character. You know, it was more of his speed, but it wasn't a funny character. It wasn't comedic. You know what I'm saying? It was, um, they was reenacting like, it was like his life. A life story, mm-hmm. some some stuff that went down, you know what I'm saying. But check it out, and you'll see what I mean. He 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 made me believe his character. Yeah, that, yeah, that's actually that's actually really dope. That I see what you're saying as in believing your character. It's funny we talk about this, bro. But when, we, when I was younger, I think I was 12, bro. My parents put me in these acting classes. Have you ever? Back to the radio. Every every on the radio. Hey, do you want to get on? Do you want to be on a show with Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus? <laughs> da, 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 da. We went and did those acting classes. My parents paid. I think it was like five grand at the time. And I think about it now. I'm like, yo, that's a lot of money back in the mm-hmm. day. This is like 15 years ago. And we did those acting classes. Never transpired into nothing. But now, when you say that, like, actually make the audience believe your character. I wish I would have heard that back then because yeah. now it makes me really look back then. I'm like, damn, I could have. That's how what they should have been telling me. Yeah. Make us feel this person you're trying to portray and not just say these words because that's what it was back then. Hey, read the script. And they didn't say, hey, be this character right here. Become this person and then see how it is. But yeah. that that, that see, gives me a big insight on that. When, when people realize that they have to take themselves out and really have to become when when they give you a script they give you the whole story right mm-hmm. but they don't tell you about your character they tell you 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 know what you know from that character from the script but it's your job to create a background story for this character uh, you know what i'm saying so you can understand why you why you are that way in this in this story so you have to you literally have to write this out and you know what school would you go to your parents do you have both of them do you have two kids do you have a dog damn. do you smoke do you you uh, write with your right hand, you know, because all these things you can use in the movie. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, do you have a little t- a tick or something like that? You know, those things help you become a better character. And it, it takes you away from yourself, even your lingo. Like, I know I say bro a lot, man a lot. But when I'm in a character, it's, it's I take me out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like even my my tone might change a little bit. I might pronunciate all my words. You know, it's stuff <laughs> stuff like that. But you have to play around with it because it's a character. That's why I love it so much because this is the only time. And I used to get, I used to be kind of nervous and embarrassed or whatever. But I had to realize that they don't even know if I'm acting or not. Mm-hmm. Like if if I go on, like if I come in here and I do a set, like you don't know, and, and I read a script. You don't know if I'm actually messing up or if, if, if I'm messing up on the script. If, if, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If it's yeah. in the script to mess up. Yeah. It's all in your head. So once you take yourself out of it and create this own character, man, like it just, it's fun. 
It's that's fun. Like, this is the only. Amazing. It's like Halloween, but without the costume. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like without the ugly costume and stuff. You just get to play around. We used to do it as kids. Yeah, play around. Yeah, used yeah, to yeah. be people. You know, wrestler, wrestlers, wrestlers, cops, and robbers, and all that stuff. You get to actually do this throughout a whole movie now, mm-hmm. and show people that. And that's what I like. Premiere nights. I like to go in and and while we while everybody's watching the screen, I'm watching the people. I'm looking at. The oohs and the ahs and what they're laughing at and and you know what made them laugh, what made them be like ah, oh, what made them mad and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That that excites me. You know, it makes me go back into the lab and and, and work harder. Okay, now since we went up, here goes the down part a little <laughs> bit. So tell us about what you were talking on the live yesterday about mm-hmm. how they done cut you out of this whole situation. I need to hear about this a little bit more right here in front of me. They cut me out. What I said? What I said? You, said you said something about they done cut your role out and so, something like that. Because I, when I got into it, you were saying they cut me out and it's not right. They got to compensate me for gas. Oh. Everything like that. So that was a scenario that was given to me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was a scenario. That, um, the scenario was what happens if uh, the director books you for a role. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, you know, it's, you're supposed to film today. You pull up today to film, and somebody else is there for your role. So they're they're like, "Hey, where's the character Brian?" And then you go to go get in your space, and somebody else goes up there with you. What you gonna do? And I was responding. I was saying, "You know, you're gonna have to pay me, bro, because oh, okay, that's okay. that's bad communication. It should never ever be like that, mm-hmm. you know." But I was answering that. <laughs> oh, okay. I was answering that question, you know. Uh, nah, man. Um, I, I hope everybody continues to do good business with yeah. you because I'm gonna always give you good business. I'm gonna do yeah. what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna know my lines. I ain't gonna be late, you know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do me. So please do me the favor and just and just pay me. Yeah, in that scenario, that's funny. I thought they literally done cut you out. I was like, dang, bro, that sucks. How are they going to be doing all this? Let, like you even said, I prepared and rememorized yeah. all my work, memorized all my words, and then y'all going to be like, no, nope, see you later. Yeah. We got somebody yeah. else. Yeah. I'd be upset. I'd be like, like you said, you would have to be understanding, Yeah, but yeah, you would be upset. I'd be mad. But this man. is going to segue into our, <laughs> our, our thing right here. Is it true? <laughs> you said, I don't know how I'm going to ever find my wife. I don't like chasing. I don't even like people like that. But I'm a family man, though. I want a family man. Is that true you said that? Yeah, so let me explain. <laughs> um, remember, I told y'all the dating, the dating pool is, is, is bad right now. So I'm saying I don't know how I'm going to ever find my wife. <laughs> because I don't like chasing. Yeah. So I just don't. I, I hit you up. Good morning. You know, hope you have a good day. Uh, I might do it the second day. Mm-hmm. Maybe even the third But if I'm not feeling that back You know what I'm saying Like you ain't gotta bug me But if I'm not feeling the, the chemistry back That chase dies Yep And I'm talking about days Like two days You know what I'm saying Real quick um, I don't like people That's real um, <laughs> People be, They just disappoint me You know what I'm yeah. saying um, they, they don't have true intentions And I'm just, I be too honest and straightforward for, for people to be doing me like that and so I, that's why I stay at the crib. Or I'm with, I'm with little man. I'm at the house. Uh, I stay to myself, bro. Uh, you sound just like me, bro. <laughs> that's what I said. All right, here's the next one. The next chick that play with me, I'm getting her sister pregnant. Don't play with me. Play with your niece. That was clever. Is that true? You said that. I did. I did. Um, and I love it, man, because people. <laughs> I'm tired of getting played with, man. Um, I got a song out there called Wrong, uh, where where it talks about. Uh, my girl cheated on me with my brother. Ooh, that's you know some crazy stuff. Like so that. I made a song, I made a video and everything. Right, there. right, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, women be out here playing, man. And the next, the next and I'm at, I'm at the age to where because I don't play with nobody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm ready to settle down. You know what I'm saying? Be 100 and all of that. You know, I, I keep my phone upwards. You know, I don't need yeah. to face it down. Uh, like I'm it. I'm good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't have nothing to hide. <laughs> So if you play with me after all of that, and I done let you around, little man, yeah, man, you gonna have to play with your niece <laughs> or nephew, whatever come out. <laughs> That's too funny, though. That's too funny. Before we wrap up, I want to touch base on you know your whole dating perspective. Do you think it'd be easier to date somebody inside of you know the film industry? Because mm-hmm. think about it this way: a lot of people who get with each other <laughs> are because they usually get each other get with each other from work. Yeah. 
And I'm not saying, oh, you know, maybe you have a perspective of somebody you're looking at on set. But do you think it'd be easier to date somebody who gets sent, like being an actress, actor? I did, but not anymore. <laughs> so I, I dated somebody um, in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to them. What industry? The adult industry? In the film industry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did y'all know the hub is gone? The what? The hub is gone. Oh yeah, I just, from Texas. I was just telling Jose about that earlier. I pointed at him. I was telling Jose about that earlier. I seen on Facebook somebody yeah. said, "Hey, y'all know the hub is gone." It's and I was gone. Like, no way. Oh, I went to get, go on, check, get a VPN. I, I went to go check. Everything. <laughs> it was gone. I was hey, like, X, hey, the X is the new hub anyway. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm very forgetful, bro. My fault. My fault. What was the question? Dang, I don't. Know oh, oh yeah. the question was, do you feel like? It's easier to date somebody who is an actor or oh, actress yeah. because they're in that same room as you. Uh, yeah, I tried that, and you know, you know, she was cool, but it it, it didn't work, obviously. But um, I wouldn't do it again. She didn't do this, but I think a lot of people do. When whenever you um, whenever you date somebody in the industry or that does the same thing as you, and it doesn't work out, it could be bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, if y'all are working together, y'all can create bad chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, if she knows people that you don't know, maybe she can try to block your your, your blessing. You know what I'm saying? Blacklist. Bl- yeah, yeah. So um, to to stay away from all of that, find somebody who who's outside the industry but understands how this shit goes. I'm not saying cheating or anything like that. I'm just saying you're gonna be busy. You're gonna be on calls. You're the gonna schedule. be on the schedule. You know what I'm saying? Just um. As long as that man is making time for you, just understand that it's a busy business. It's funny you said that, too, because I feel like that narrative of just trying not to date somebody in the same industry is the narrative that kind of goes with any business. Because just at the place where I used to work, they used to say the same thing. Don't date nobody underneath you in position because yep. that causes favoritism and stuff like that. So that actually yep. does make sense to just find somebody not in the same space to avoid those things. Because I could say I dealt with that idea of <laughs> just the bad narratives and everything yeah. like that by being in the same space, which is not good. But lesson learned. Yeah. Lesson learned. Uh, for sure. We all learn lessons, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no it's a, L's, it's a good one. but a lesson. No L's. Lesson starts with L. You know, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I want to ask you one more question before we wrap this up. All right. What is one what is one good advice somebody's giving you up into your life right now? Mm. A lot of advice. Uh one advice that that I stick with that's good to them. Yeah. Man. Put me on. You should have asked me that in the beginning, <laughs> so I could be thinking. You know what I'm we saying? Got, we got time. Uh, we got time. Let me see. Let me see. It's a lot of little lessons, man. A little nice little sayings that I'll be keeping with me on a daily basis. But um, I wish I had some that rhymed and shit. But that would be too clever. <laughs> yeah. Um. Nah, man. Just, just, just be one hundred. Nah, uh, yeah, that works. I'll just, take that. Let, you, let that me works. tell you some advice, and then you take this, and then tell somebody else now. Bad, now bad. I'm just playing. I was <laughs> gonna say I was gonna tell them this quote I had told him earlier. I was like, uh, "We all must weather the storm because the storm provides." Mm. And I, I had seen a movie. It's a kids' movie. In the movie, the the creatures they would wait till the storm passed over. To go eat all the other, that would be their food. Once the storm passed over, it killed all the other animals and stuff. Yeah. They would be able to go find their prey and attack and et cetera. So that's why I would say, like, we all must weather the storm, go through the hard times. And once the hard times pass by, that's when you can come out and start, you know, going up, blossoming. And yeah, you nah, that's true. So yeah. that's just the way, that's just the, uh, an, an idea that I, I had seen, thought of. And I was like, oh, this sounds pretty good. I like that. Yeah, nah, keep that. I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. So, if there's anybody you want to shout out, to, oh, go ahead. My bad. My bad, if there's anybody else you wanted to give a shout out to, you feel free to do it on that side right there, purple phone. Boom! Hey man, shout out to my boy Jackson. You know what I'm saying? In the bag checking your daddy out. Uh, shout out to everybody in Dallas, man, making things happen, man. I appreciate y'all for following me. Uh, if you ain't following me, follow me on Facebook at Brandon Medlock. That's M E D L O C K, and uh, follow me on all other platforms at two number two. Throwed music underscore.
Oh, music is spelled M U Z I K. Oh, we'll put all that information yeah, in, guys. Yeah, we'll put yeah. that in at the bottom for you. Boom. Yeah, we'll right, right under the description. Yeah, we'll plug it for you, bro. We got you. Yeah, appreciate y'all, man. <laughs> but I just want to say a big thank you for coming on, bro. Like I said, I've known you for years now. I'm actually glad that we can come on. I get to know you a little bit better, learn more about you, learn more about me, learn more about Roger. So don't think this is the last time you're going to come on, bro. You're going to come man, on. Man, I hope again. not, man. Yeah, I'm going to come on again. If you got anything you want to say, let me know. We'll bring you on. You got some women topics. Let's get, let's deep dive into it my yeah, boy right. I want to do that yeah. but I appreciate you so much for coming on bro for real like I really do appreciate you for taking your time out bringing your son everything I really do appreciate it man I appreciate y'all for having me man this is dope uh, I know it's gonna grow uh, I'm just happy y'all had me on here man hey, you know, I was here to see it in the beginning you yeah, know exactly yeah. from the start bro yeah. and then you're at the start too bro Facts. Too like Facts. you go into the Hollywood you start getting bigger bro we seen it from the start I see yeah. it from I, I love being able to say <laughs> You don't even know Brandon from the joint. Yeah. You don't even know Brandon <laughs> from, the, from joint. the joint, bro. You don't even yeah. know from the joint, man. Stop it. Quit playing. It's real, <laughs> man. And I love it. That's funny. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys for tuning in to another episode of Direct Discussions. We appreciate you so much. Check into the next one next week. We'll see you guys. Peace. And keep it saucy. <laughs> <laughs>